episode three, I'm at the Warriors Boxing Gym in Lee Park with the Lee Park Warrior, Mr. Tony Oki. How are you? I'm good, Tony. How are you, mate? Yeah, good. Nice to see you. Right, mate, I'm going to fire straight in now with a little thing that we do called Out of a Cannon. All right, so I'm yeah. going to fire some questions at you and then I want your answers. All right? Benidorm or Bogner? Bogner. Park Parade or Commercial Road? Park Parade. Country Walk or Country Pub? I'm going to have to say pub. Pub. Batman or The Joker? Batman. Weatherspoons or Tim Witherspoon? Oh, that's another close one. Tim with a spoon. Really? Mm. Even after the Bruno fight? Mm. Right leg in or right leg out? Right leg in. Left leg in or left leg out? Left leg in. All in. Thank you. That was out of the cannon. Right, Tone. So I want to start off with um, where you grew up, where you come from, and the reason why you got the name the Lee Park Warrior. Well, I'm from a council estate called Lee Park, which is, I think it's... It was one of the largest in Europe at one stage. And boxing's a massive part in Lee Park. It's you know part of the young boys coming through and obviously girls now. And we've got a gym there and it was run by Jeff Weston. Okay. And he's produced loads of champions along the way. And I actually got my mum to take me down there because my brother was already there training along with Chris Bessie. Okay, yeah. And I wanted to go, but he wouldn't take me. So my mum took me. And- okay. What age did you go? What age did you start off down at the gym? I think, I think she took me down there when I was about 10 and a half, 11. Oh, really? And that, yeah, oh, yeah, I think I was about 10. And then I had my first fight when I was 11. But I was always like short and fat. So dieting and things like that was one of the things I was never too good with. So how tall are you, if you don't mind me asking? About five, about five, nine, but I like to say five, nine and a half. Sure you said five, 10 earlier. No, I said five, nine five, and a half. Ten, five, I like to say 10. So when you first went in, um, at the amateur gym, you, you were fighting at heavyweight, is that right? No, when I first, obviously when I was a kid, I was yeah. always I was always little and short. I got you know, I've got a thick set. I've always got I've got big legs, so I think I'm heavy boned. You know what I mean? So I was always fighting taller people yeah. as a junior. So when I stopped boxing as a junior, I think I was 15. I think I won 20, lost 20. But I think a lot of them I was robbed. Because I was out working them yeah, and sure. into the body, and thinking, but I never really got the decision. Do you know what no. I mean? And then I came back when I was, I think I was about 18. My brother taught me around to come back because I was, I was getting in a lot of trouble outside, okay. like fighting and things like that. And he, he sort of taught me because he was like training up there. He was being one of the trainers along with Jeff. Okay. Did you, he, was your brother a pro then? Or amateur? No, no, he was, he was an amateur. amateur. Yeah. He, he was very similar. Yeah. He boxed all the way through like he's, he was a junior. And then he stopped, then come back as a senior. And I think he, I think he had nine or ten senior fights, and I think he won all but one. Okay. You know, because he was a bit of a boy when he was older. Yeah. But he taught me into coming back, and yeah. and and then that's when it all really took off for me. Okay. So senior amateurs, how many did you have on seniors? Senior, I had obviously because I class the junior as that's a, that's about learning. Yeah, Do you know sure. what I mean? It really yeah. is about learning. And I think some dads are a little bit too hard on their kids when they lose a fight and think, look, when they're a junior, because that is all part and parcel of boxing. Yeah, you win, you lose. Yep. Do you know what I mean? And I think that's all about learning. And then you've got to, if you start becoming a man, you should take it a bit more serious with the training and stuff like that. I think I had 21 and I won 20. And I think all but about five or six of them was all in the ABAs yep. against the best in the country and I think I had about half stoppages of that. Oh, really? Which is quite remarkable really. And that was at light heavy did you say? No that was heavy. That was that a heavy? Was heavy oh, really? weight. I, I won the ABAs at heavy weight. So you won the ABAs at heavy? I won the I ABAs at heavy weight in 96. Yep. Got to the final again in 97, lost on points to Blue Stevens, which I uh, played a part in that I believe, but you know he, he won fair and square and then the following year that's when they brought out the cruiserweight, which was 86 and under. Yeah. But I was always 86 anyway, okay. even when I was fighting a heavyweight. They was like, come boiling down to get under 91. But I was always weighing about 86 anyway. So then I went in under 86 and I won at a cruiser as well. Jesus. And I ended up boxing for England at heavyweight against America and against Scotland. And then I boxed at cruiserweight for England out in Denmark. How did you get on boxing for England? The 
the one with the the American uh, Calvin Brock. I lost on points. I beat the Scottish champion at heavyweight, and then it was like a no contest out in Denmark. I got a little nick under the eye, and we were supposed to start the ABAs in a couple of months, and. The doctor, like the one who inspected it when the ref yeah. stopped it, he was like the English one. And he said, Tony, you're starting the ABAs in a couple of weeks. Yeah. He said, let's not risk it. And then they'd done a no contest and the blah, blah, fellow won it. So for yourself, being a smaller, well, light heavy cruiser and heavyweight, what do you think made you stand out and how do you think you got your success? What, what, was, what was your main attributes that you brought? I don't know. I think personally, I know what they are. But yeah, just your engine. heart, grit and determination and yeah. fitness. Yeah. You know, like our old amateur trainer, Jeff Weston, he, 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 was, he was brilliant at the fitness side of things. Yeah. Do you know, he, he, like when he was on the pads, and he would do the pads all night. We'd be in the gym for like two or three hours really? and he would do all the kids on the pads. You know, he, he was a fantastic trainer and he, he got in your head and he just, you know, I think the fitness and the determination with the bigger guys, they yeah. couldn't keep up with me. And, 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 and obviously my jab as well, my jab, you know, I know it got a lot of accolade as a pro, mm. but as a, as a amateur, it was it was it was phenomenal. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You had Constant, a, yeah. Amazing jab. Yeah. Double, uh, amazing double jab, triple jab. Yeah. You cut the distance so well, work your way in. Yeah. How did you find as a smaller bloke? How did you find the the shots from heavyweights? Did, did you did you feel the difference between <laughs> cruiser, light heavy, and no, heavy? No. Do, do you know what? I, I think my defence was very very underrated. If you. Yeah. If if you'd looked closely into it, I don't, I don't really think I took that many clean shots. Because my one thing I will say is my arms were there, always yeah. there as a pro, as an amateur. There, if yeah. you watch, they were there. So I don't think a lot of shots used to get through. And if they did, where I had quite a granite chin, yeah. I, I used to just bounce off me. And obviously, where they're so big and they got a lot of muscle, that's got to have the oxygen, and mm. they they would get tired a lot more quicker than me. And I. You know, and I was really, really fit, even from a kid. Yeah. I might have been fat, but I was extremely fit. Yeah, fat with an A. Yeah. Who um, who would you say was the hardest puncher you've ever been in with? What, amateur or professional? Any. Amateur, professional, pub. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I was quite lucky in the pub ones. Um, <laughs> see, I think the hardest puncher, who I would say that, Someone that rocked you to your boots or... Ah, oh, yeah, but that was... See, there's a few. Mm. I've got to be honest, there, there, there's a few. Chris Davis was who I beat for the Commonwealth title. Again, he, I think he was ranked in the top 10. I don't know, he must have been high top 10 as well, like six or something like that. And Ronnie Davis actually said, when we won the Commonwealth title, he said, the two people you want to stay away from is Chris Davis and Peter Obo. Okay. And my very next fight was against Chris Davis. Yeah. I think him... Um, Howard Eastman was a phenomenal puncher, mm. and I used to have to spar him every single day. Really? Yeah, and it and it was, it was very very hard because I'd get in my uncle's car, and it was like two and a half hours drive mm. to get there Where to did you spar, spar him? Him. in okay. Battersea oh, and then okay. Fitzroy Lodge. The bomber, there, wasn't it? Yeah. Was it how, yeah. But he was he, he was he, you know, he was a middleweight, but he mm. was he was huge. He was like six foot two. And how he ever used to make middleweight, I'd never know. But he, I've watched him beat up heavyweights. Mm -hmm. I watched him. I watched him have a spar with Bruce Scott. Do you remember Bruce Scott? Yeah, the way yeah, he was cruiserweight yeah, yeah. and like heavyweight. And, and I watched him knock him from pillar to post. Jesus. He Some was, people have just got natural yeah, war strength. I just, he never, for some reason, he never produced it on the big stage when he fought Joppy and that. But honestly, he, yeah, I would go as far as to say Howard Eastman, Chris Davis, and obviously Dean Francis. Yeah, sure. What about... Chris Eubank Senior, did you spar? You no, you were in the same, yeah, in the same he, um, stable, weren't you? He, um, obviously because of the Ronnie connection with yeah. Ronnie and that, he, he came down to the gym a few times, give a fair bit of advice. He used to watch me in Neil Linford spa and he yeah. used to like that because that they were very competitive spars. Very, he, he was another solid puncher. Yeah. And um, he used to give a lot of advice and stuff like that. And little Chris come down. Yeah. I, used to, I sparred little Chris when he was a little kid. Okay. And that moved about with him and that. I never, no, I never actually shared the ring with. But then Dean Francis had, and um, oh, there was an old, uh, oh, what was it? Mark Baker had sparred yeah. with Chris Senior, and I'd obviously sparred a lot with Mark Baker, and that. he helped yeah. me out a lot to learn the ropes as such, and you know, yeah. get into my groove early on in my career. So your Dean Francis fight, that was one of them that you were cruising, 
Um, I've, I've seen in previous interviews that you said that you fought Dean Francis basically with one arm because he was coming back from an injury, wasn't yeah, he? Well, he, he? Yeah, well, because he did. He, he injured one of his arms. Yeah. I think it was his right shoulder or something. Um, a few years before that, you yeah. know, because I'd watched it on TV. Dean Francis was, was a real good talent. He was one of them cases that injury had stopped him reaching, you know, the pinnacle, really. Yeah, you know? yeah, sure. And obviously I knew Dean Francis because he obviously from Bayes and quite local but, yeah, to us. Yeah. And, I, and I was watching the fight when he'd done that. So, but he was, he seemed like he'd been around forever. Mm. Do you know what I mean? I knew the pedigree he had. He looked massive. Oh. He, looked, he looked like a specimen for the for the weight. Yeah, he was, yeah. wasn't he? he, he yeah. I was, that was my problem. I never looked like a specimen, even on weight in that. But you didn't have to, no, did you? No, no, because no. Because no. look at Tyson Fury. Yeah. Looks can be completely yeah. deceptive. And there's, well, even around the amateur gyms and whatever, growing up, I've seen many a, a hard man from the yeah. streets or a muscle know what? man. The thing, the thing with Dean Francis, you know, God bless him, I did fought about three or four times in that fight. Mm. He was gone. Mm. I could, you know, I'd rocked him, I'd seen him wobble. I'd, I oh, yeah, I yeah. went back to the corner and Jimmy Tibbs and Johnny Ings, my trainer, he kept saying to me, he's going, he's going, you know, and I put the foot right on the gas. I did, I wouldn't go as far as to say I was burning myself out, mm. but I knew, because of experience, that must have been my, I don't know, my 10th or 11th, something like that. I'm not sure what the yeah. numbers, because I've had so many like total fights as in like 10 and 12 rounders. but. I knew I had the championship rounds to go and I hadn't got him out of there. So I thought, you know, I took me foot off the gas, but that obviously gave him a chance to have a breather. Mm. And then we did, we both, if you watch the tape, we both went in for a left hook. Yeah. He's caught me, mine compared to his was nothing. I went down, I got up, rather than try and hold and run away or something, I didn't, he come in, I started going him and then Richard Davis called off. There you go. So from Francis, did you then, did you then fight cleverly after that? That was the cleverly yeah. story. It, and that's no disrespect to Nathan Cleverly because yeah. Nathan Cleverly went on and was, I think he won the WBA and he won the WBO, didn't he? Yeah, so he's yeah. two time world champion. Yeah. That's the only fight that eats away at me because mm. I got the phone call when I was in the, in the office with my trainer, my professional trainer, Johnny Inks. Yeah. So I had Ronnie Davis for half of my career. It was a bit of a hard yeah. follow-on fight from yeah. the Dean Francis well, fight. You, you didn't first... really get a break, did no, you? No, because what they what they done, they rung, they rung and they said to Johnny, who was then my trainer up in London, second half of my career, they said to John, does Tony want to fight Nathan Cleverly? Well, mm. John said, well, yeah, of course. Yeah. When? Three and a half weeks. Really? John said, but he's, he's only literally just walked back through the door, which I did. I was 13 and a half stone, 14 stone, literally. But years previous to that, when I was with Ronnie down at Brighton, I fought a fellow called Andre Kiarston. For the, I defended my world title against him. And I only trained for it after coming back off holiday for about three, four weeks. And I got my fitness rate up. Yep. But what you're failing to remember is that was like six, seven years before. Yeah, yeah. Do, you, do you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I, seven I, look, years worth of life yeah, on top. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. So, but it, I got forced into it. They said, well, if Tony doesn't take this fight for the Commonwealth title, he'd get frozen out of the light heavyweight division. Okay. And, and that's what they said. That was as true as Dean Powell said it to yeah. John. So we said, yeah, we'll do it. We're trying. And, you know, I think up until the Tony Bellew fight, Nathan Cleverly has always said that that was his hardest fight. Yeah. So, you know, I, I got in decent enough shape, but the halfway mark where normally I put my foot on the gas and I'll pull away, mm. you could see I never had I never had the gas there like I normally did. Yeah. And that's why I say it eats away at me because with the Francis one, I can't argue. With the Matthew Barney one, there's the things surrounding it. Do you know, mm. do you know what I mean? With the Nathan Cleverly one, it eats away at me because I think you only fought a 70% Tony. So the Matthew Barney fight, I was down there watching the fight in the, in the stands. Do you the... think I'll take everything else out of the equation? Do you think I lost the fight? Oh, no, I know the fight was terrible. What can I say here, Tom? No, <laughs> you got, you, no, 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 of course, no, of course, it's no, the truth. No, no, I didn't, I didn't no, think lost the fight. because I don't think they did on the TV. I don't know, because no. I don't watch it, was, it. I've never um, watched it. It was fucking Bull and the Matador, wasn't it? Like, he was just running around the fucking ring, wasn't he? He had blood coming out of his back. Yeah. He yeah. had blood dripping down his back where he'd been on the ropes, non-stop. Yeah. Now, for me, obviously, I... I, I understand this boxing, it, not get it, and all the rest of it. Yeah. But to come to your hometown. To, work, to, to win a title. To win a title at yeah. short notice. So yeah. To run like that and then yeah. get the nod, it was sickening. Mm. Do you know 
you know what I mean? It was he's a Southampton boy. Southampton boy. Yeah. But then he edged on the front. Obviously, there ain't no place for any sort of like violence, crowd violence. I'm not saying that. But he did edge him on. You know, yeah. he had the best bit of luck in the world. Yeah. And he did win it. Yeah. You know, that, that's the way it's down in the book now that he's won it yeah. and everything. To then edge on all the fans, it, it was felt a bit robbed yeah. because it was, do you know what I mean? Not the place to do not it. Not really, not no. really, but you know, he won. Not when you've got half of Park Parade in the left hand yeah. stand that you're walking out of the exit I from. Think we had Park Parade, Paul's, yeah, 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 Mill. Had all the, we had everyone, all the boys there. down there, mate. Cool. So, um, one thing I wanted to ask you um, who's, who would you say has been your biggest influence? Amateur and professional in regards to your boxing career, coaches, outside influence. I don't know, family members, friends. Yeah, I think as, as an amateur, all, all day long, Jeff Weston. With all day long, Jeff Weston and my brother Nick. Yeah. And my brother Nick later on when I become a senior. Yeah. You know, but Jeff Weston, he he, he deserved everything I achieved as an amateur. And there's loads of, and I mean that there is loads of. Kids, yeah. you know, it wasn't really women boxing back then, so I'd have to say boys. Yeah. But there were so many boys who he made a difference in their life. Yeah. With the training and the discipline mm. and the achievements that we've done as a club. Yeah. You know, sure. you, the the boys that's come out of our club on the amateur scene, not not so much the professional. I'm the only one as a professional, as mm. so, but the amateurs that he had, the like in the ABAs, he's boxed for England, and it's, it's second to none when you consider. You know, we're lucky enough to be in a ring here. Yeah. You know, our ring at the Lee Park ABC was chairs. Yeah, that's unbelievable. Do, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, you know, as an amateur, it was him and then obviously my brother Nicky later on. In life in general, I've got an old brother called Chris. Yep. He's been like a father figure. Okay. Right? Yep. Even now, I'm sat here, I'm 46, I'm an ex world champion, can obviously yeah. handle myself. Yeah. He shouts at me. I shuts up. Yeah, level of respect. Yeah, yeah, I'll, do, yeah. I'll, do, I'll do as I'm told. Yeah. Yeah. On the professional side of things, my uncle Frank played a massive part yeah. in my career. You know, yeah. It, Frank it, Hopkins. Yeah, yeah, he did. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he really did. He did play a massive part. Then obviously you've got Ronnie, yeah. who took me from being, which I was as an amateur, I was basically a street fighter, pub fighter, yep. come boxer. Do you know what I mean? A good one, he, he, yeah, good one at that. Not, not bad. Yeah, good one. At either. World, world champion, <laughs> world champion street fighter. Yeah. But but yeah, in so he he changed me from that to be a, a quite a, a quite a well respected boxer. Most you definitely. Know, do you know? And yeah. he like says I, I I should have achieved so much more than what I did. I think it, it was uh, I was saying it was saying it to the guy in my office. We're talking about boxing in general. I was saying to Tom on the way down in the car. The boxing world then, compared to the way that the boxing world is now, if you were boxing now, you'd be a fucking superstar, millionaire with, with everything yeah. that you achieved. It was a different... It, totally different. It was... There weren't... Even if you go back 10 years, time, there weren't many people around the, the boxing gyms. There weren't people... like. It was it was the rawness of the sport, wasn't it? Yeah. You, now, but, now every Tom, Dick, and Harry's got a pair of boxing gloves, and they're showing themselves shadow boxing or on the yeah. bag. Well, I've just done a boxer size session. Well, it's a different a, world. Well, they've just got to put it on the internet, haven't they? Yeah. And all automatically, they get a load of likes and a load of comments. But it's just it's a different. But <laughs> no, you, like, totally. Because obviously, I interviewed Ty. Shout out Ty Brown, New Year of Boxing Gym. Yeah. I was just about I was just about to say as well, when I turned pro. Yeah. Then obviously, Ty from Lee Park. Yep. We had. Uh, Jay Morris from over the Isle of Wight. Uh, we had a couple of, we had the cousins, brother. A few. Yeah. What me being pro sort of opened the doors for a few other local boxers. Yeah. I think, well, is it da Danny Cousins, isn't it? He was Danny Cousins up to a few yeah. years ago, wasn't it? Sam Cousins. Yeah, you yeah. Had, do you know those? Those were the boys. As I say, you had Jay, you had John Honey from up Bays and Stoke Way. So was Chris Bessie as good as everybody say? What as an amateur? We, Just in general, he was he, amazing. He, wasn't we, he? we won't. I don't think. Yeah. You know, he was my brother's best friend. He yeah. was, I think, and I don't think in my lifetime you will see a better amateur. Everybody that I speak to, six times ABA champion, from in and around that scene, everybody mentions Chris Bessie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was. He, he, he was brilliant. Conway, I've got. So he was a middleweight. Middleweight was he? I think he went from everything from like welterweight, like middleweight, because he beat Carl to Frost, middleweight didn't in it? a final. Yeah. And that. But then he's probably, was that the ABA final? That was the ABA final. That was yeah. when I won the ABA. So I think yeah. that was the year I won it. And now I think he's but like good pros, like Steve Roberts. I think he boxed. Yeah. Richard Williams. I think he's boxed most of the top 
professionals of around our sort of time. So why did he went, not turn over? Because I think he had a great job in the in the army, had oh, really? his pension and yeah. things like that. And I don't necessarily think his style would have suited the pros. Okay. Do you know he, he got that point scoring off Olympic to a style. Yeah, 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 he got that off to a T and that. Then obviously his brother went on and won the ABAs as well, Billy. Again, yeah. both did Billy win it at heavyweight then? He won, I think, super heavyweight. Oh, did he? But they yeah. were still two yeah. boys from Lee Park. Yeah. Lee Park ABC come through to Jeff it's Weston. It's not the world of opportunities. Think, no, yeah, no, no, no. Yeah. So, yeah, they were, they were, as brothers, obviously, they, they both went on and won ABAs, which is a fantastic. A big shout out to Jeff Weston then. He bought yeah, some, he yeah. Bought some good boys. Ma made down. a massive difference to a lot of boys' life, Jeff Weston did. And he's only that big. Is he? Yeah. Is he, st is, is he still involved in the boxing? No, 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 no. I think, I think when I turned professional, I don't think it was the same because he'd been he'd got to the top of the sport, yeah, and that, and I think he sort of to himself. I know, I'm only guessing yeah. that he had achieved everything he wanted to achieve yeah. in the amateur game. He did, you know, because everyone the main thing to win in Britain is the senior ABA title, and it well he'd done that with me two different ways, yeah, yeah, and sure. you, you know, and I think I think that he retired knowing that he'd achieved what he'd set out to, and obviously boxing for England and stuff like that. I uh, wanted to ask you about prize fighter. Obviously, Brilliant. went into the prize fighter. I was explaining to Tom, three fights the same night, winner takes all. Was it 25,000 prize when then, you won yeah, it? Yeah. At, how was that? For one night, that was... One night only? Yeah, for the one night, that was definitely one of the, the best nights of my career. Have because you ever had three fights in one night before, outside of the boxing ring? It's quite hard going, really, isn't it? Yeah, I don't know, back in the day. Maybe. <laughs> back down in decadence, it could be quite possible. <laughs> but no, um, yeah. Uh, for one night, yeah, it was, it was brilliant. And, and uh, like, people in my gym, they was all betting on me. I was, because I had the cleverly loss, but what I was saying about the cleverly loss, I'm not saying I would have beat him, yeah. right, 100% fit, because he'd won two two world titles, you know. So yeah. I knew I was world class. So yeah. you can tell that by the people who I got beat by. Yeah. We're all world class boys, do you know what I mean? So I was world class. But for, to have three fights in one night, to have your arm raised three times in a couple of hours, get so a chunk of money at the end of it, in front of, in front of TV cameras, Happy days. loads of people obviously there in the crowd. Some achievement. Uh, yeah. It was brilliant. It was, it, it was, as I say, one of the best so it was career. three fights of three threes, was it? It was three fights of three threes. Yeah. I fought uh, Billy Boyle. I think, I think I remember he had like 11 or 12 undefeated. Yeah, Courtney then Fry. I, then I beat the favourite in the next one. And yeah. then Darren Stubbs, who was another veteran like me in the final. But I was, I was proper in my groove by then. Because Courtney Fry had boxed in the Olympics, didn't he? He'd, did, I, did, I think he... Did he go, did he go the he, same I think he, as he, Garrison? I, I think he did. And I think yeah. he won the Commonwealth gold medal as was well. Was he the favourite then? He was the favourite, oh. yeah. Yeah, so you was the underdog going yeah. in there and then come out with all the cash. Everyone in my gym. Bank robber. Well, they, they, well, they would say that we did rob something because yeah. everyone in my gym up at Cannon Town yeah. kept going to all the bookies and keep putting on bets. Oh. In the end, they stopped taking bets around there. That's different class. Yeah. So, so you yeah. was absolute... Oh, well, I was the flavour of the month the when, king, I went back to, yeah, the when I went back to the, the gym. To, to Every... three, but everyone patting <laughs> you on the back like always. Cool. Oh, so obviously the Matthew Barney fight, this is a subject that I wanted to speak to you about. And I know it's not something that you've spoken, no, part of it, spoken it? a part, great deal about. It's part um, of the story. So I thought I'd just give you an opportunity to give your point across. Um, Fort Matthew Barney, after the Matthew Barney fight, obviously you got tested um, for, for drugs and, and it come up negative. Um, I must have been tested in my career. Yeah. So I was in a lot of title fights. So obviously I don't keep track on what, what the record is or anything like that, but I almost probably got tested, I don't know, 15, 20 times in my yeah. career. It's all it, it, what it showed is that from, who did I fight before Barney? Limford yeah. to Barney, that cocaine had been in my system at some point. Yeah. Right? Because the actual thing they found was this big long word, it's in benzo something, I don't know. It was like that. They never actually found cocaine as such. Do okay. you know what I mean? Yeah. I was a young boy, yep. made a mistake, was out on holiday with a load of lads. Yep. You know, it's anyone who can't say when they're young and they're dumb, yep. I call them a liar. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it was yeah, a mistake. 
I paid the price, I owned up to it. When I went to the board, you know, you have to yeah. go and sit in front of the board. Rather than make an excuse, I could have said I got it in a tea or yeah. got spiked or Canelo. something like that. Yeah, with no, the, with I, the meat. I just, yeah. I, I, you know, I just went in there, I held my hands up, told well, stupid. As I say, I've been tested loads of times before that, yeah. and I've been tested loads of times after that. Sure. It just, it was one of them, and it ain't, like we, I had a discussion on a podcast before about performance enhancing drugs and recreational, and going into depth on it a little bit, I think with the performance enhancing, you're really trying to cheat. Dangerous. In, in, in a sport where yeah, the loser dangerous. could get really badly hurt, yeah, as, as, as we've seen, haven't yeah. we? Do you know what I mean? Recreational, in a, in a, I'm not condoning. I'm not condoning it. No. In, a, in, a, in a way, it's going to go against you. Oh, well, isn't yeah, it? yeah, yeah, and and I think maybe a bit of a like a strike thing, you know, like give them a couple of warnings, like a warning or something, and a fine, then a bigger fine, and say, right, next one, you're done. You know, something like. I'm not condoning it. Please yeah. don't think I'm telling yeah, no, any no, young no, kid to do anything. You know, yeah. drugs are bad. Full stop. Yeah, yeah. But we're talking. I'm. You know, there's there is a difference between. That which I'll class as stupidity, yeah. and stu- you know, I'm, you know, I don't want to say this in an odd way, but I'm, I'm clearly not a, an addict. No, do, certainly not. Yeah. Do, do you understand what and, I mean? And in the end of the day, Tone, like you say, you got tested, you got, yeah. it, like, you, it got flagged up. Yeah. You, you did your year ban. You served your year ban. Did. You rolled your hands up, said you made a mistake, and we move on, don't we? Do yeah, you know I mean? yeah. Well, that's and that's what happened. I came back. I had one fight down the Mount Batten Centre against a fellow called David Tan who would just beat Tony Dodson. Do you remember Tony Dodson? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A real good super middleweight, like, yeah. He beat him. And I had a fight with him, and I got caught on top of the head, and I'd done a, a Michael and Jackson dance. Because yeah. I got, it was just on top of the head. Yeah. Right, and then Discombobulated. obviously- Discombobulated. Yeah. yeah. And then people thought, oh, has he, has he still got what it takes? Because I was coming was coming back after the yeah. band. And then I had a fight with, it was a good friend of mine now, you know? So it's a bit hard for me to hmm. say that I got robbed terrible against Peter Aymer. So did the ban have a big effect on your career? In regards to fights after? Yeah. In regards would, to your trajectory yeah, I would, yeah, where I would you were say, going? I would say so, 100%. I never had anything yeah. easy. No one, I ever got no favours. Any close fights, the Barney fight. I, I, I don't. I never got any. I'm not moaning about it because I think that was the expectation of you, though, know, Tone. I think it was a case of you're going in. It's going to be a war. Yeah. You're going to drag it through the trenches. Yeah. One way or the other. I don't think I got any sort of favours in it. And I do think, which, as I say, there's no place for any type of drug in life, let alone in sport. You know, I want to make that clear. I agree. Yeah. Right. But stupid. I came back. And then when I had the fight against Peter Aymer, it was scored by the, the referee, mm-hmm. right? Every single person that was in the arena, right, on TV, they fought a wonder fight. It's only a 10 round fight, fought yeah. a wonder fight by about four rounds. That is not a close fight. No, no, no. That is Boxing News had me winning by about three, mm-hmm. four rounds. That is not a close fight. Like, you give it to him by a point, which yeah. I'm not, like Peter's a, a good boxer and he is, he is a good friend of mine now. Mm-hmm. And that, but I just thought, oh, what's going on here? So I am, um, at the time, Michael Ballingall, who we'll talk about a little bit if you want. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah, um, no, Michael. He's, no, yeah, yeah, he's, he's, he's boys, Lucas yeah. and yeah. Michael McKinson. Yeah. Well, he was always part of my, my team. He used to train with me, he used to run with me. Yeah. He to, we've, he's come on training camps, you know, he'd done his sort of apprenticeship around my sort of team and that, which obviously has gone on now, he's passed on to his boys. Yeah. And we sat down and he turned around and said, Maybe you need to get away, Tone. Maybe you need to change. Because I was, went back to Ronnie Bar then. Mm. And so we had a chat, and I ended up going up. To, that's when I went to London and trained with Johnny Ings, which benefited, uh, benefited me so much. It just, I was like a training camp. I ended up, you know. What gym was uh, that? That was at the TKO. Okay. But, you know, so I learned everything with Ronnie. Ronnie was a, a, a massive part of my boxing. Without Ronnie, I wouldn't have achieved what I'd done. But that relationship, I think, had come to an end. Yep. And I needed something different. And then when I went up to Johnny, it, I knew everything anyway. As we, you know, I wasn't going to get taught a lot of different. But he increased my power because he must have done because started knocking people out again. Mm. And where do you think that? Uh, what plant, plant like stick? Yeah, a little bit, maybe slowing, slowing down a yeah. little bit. Um, and the, his way of fighting was very attacky sort of way, which suited yeah. me. And then like, like our little like little connection that we got at the gym. It's like a family, and he, he really is. Like, like family to me now, it's the, you know, there's no difference. I'll constantly in contact with him all the yep. time, even now since I've been retired. And then, so then 
it happened again. We, we started winning it, things again. I won the British. I've defended it. You know, against Brian McGee. Brian McGee, after my fight with him, that I got a draw out in Ireland. If that does not tell you that I won the fight mm. out in Ireland, I had Jimmy Tibbs and uh, Johnny Ings in my corner. At no stage was there any panic in my corner when I was in Ireland, because that was the deal. Once I fought for the British and beat Spartacus and stopped him, yeah. that, I could add my def- that I had to go out to Ireland. Do you know what I mean? To have my first defence against my mandatory challenger and I'll box Brian McGee. He went two fights later. He ended up, I think he won the WBA super middleweight title. So that tells you the sort of level I was at. But I never realised that. Until I look back now, I never realised that because I just loved the fighting. All the other sort of stuff wasn't really me. Do you know what I mean? It's just one reason or other, it's in you, isn't it? Yeah. It was in you. Like, you just... I wasn't... You're in your element. Yeah. You're just in your element in the ring there. Yeah, I wasn't brought up with my dad, but my dad apparently was a like a bare knuckle boxer and used to work in the fairgrounds and things like that. Yeah. And I wasn't brought up with him, so it's, it's, it was in me. And Do you that, think that, that give you that fight though? Or that sense of purpose or the fact that you, you felt like, I don't know, you might have to go in there and prove yourself because I of that? I just, I, yeah, I, no, I just loved the fighting. So you said your old man used to fight in the yeah, fairgrounds? Yeah, he used to fight in the fairgrounds down at Southsea and things like that. Oh, really? Years ago, yeah. That's interesting. I think, I think years and years and years ago my brother's seen the paper clip and I haven't but yeah. my, older bro- my oldest brother Chris has seen the paper clip he knocked out the Canadian champion out on the South Sea Common oh, really? they went, it was in a pub which I'm not condoning we don't condone we pubs. don't condone pubs only on a, only on a Friday fighting, out, yeah. only on fighting the Friday, outside pubs Saturday yeah but, and then they went out on the South Sea Common and had had a little straightener and my dad knocked him out so obviously I get, must get it from my dad because my mum's not, nothing like that mm. do you know what I mean so we started winning again as I say, stop Spartacus, went out to Ireland. That was a brilliant night. Mm. Really was out in Ireland at the point in Dublin. Dublin's a cracking night out. Yeah, I've never been actually. Yeah, brilliant yeah. cracking night out. But yeah, so got a draw there, and I thought I won it comfortably. Got mm. a draw there, came back, defended my British against Hamer again, the one yeah. that I felt that I won the English against. So you got but, the rematch. So I got the rematch. Yeah. You could tell from the very beginning, I was had one thing on my mind mm. stop him. Mm. I had to stop him. Not going to points. Mm. Had to stop him, and I did. I got, I think, got knocked out of the year. Stopped him. Then we had who was who was after Hamer. I think I, I think that was then it was Francis, wasn't it? Yeah. And then again, again, I was having a hum there. I think they actually got voted. Yeah, did it got voted fight of the year. Great, by, great by, fight. Yeah. By yeah. British boxing so board. I watched, I watched it yeah. again uh, last week. Yeah. Great got, fight. Yeah. Got voted fight like, of the year. It was very. Well, we were you were cruising, but yeah. it was very back and forth, and he didn't. Yeah. He just didn't go away. And I spoke to him because I've yeah, I've ended up becoming really good friends with Matt Crouch, who's from Bristol. That the guy that organised who the Jeff organised football. We'll get on to that, but yeah. yeah, but I've become really really good friends with him and that. And I spoke to uh, Ding a couple of days before he, he, he passed away and all that. Yeah. Like, and we we shared a, you know a little conversation out on the phone. It was quite touching yeah. and things like that. Like, when you share that sort of battle with someone Most definitely it's a different well, well, I'm not saying that we was best of mates but there yeah. was definitely look there is with Hamer there was anyone that I thought that you got a sort of a bit of a bond do you know what yeah. I mean and, and that, I spoke there's, to there's a natural connection yeah. there isn't there yeah, and, a, and a natural level of respect even if you definitely. despise the person yeah, you definitely. still think I don't fucking like him but I respect yeah. I respect the geezer yeah. because I've been yeah, here with yeah. him and I respect Barney and he ain't my favourite cup of tea you're at, you're, but I've got at, to because I've shared the ring with yeah, him that's it I've always, when I won the British he come up to me and I just knocked Homer out and he said don't you fancy the rematch you've avenged that one don't you fancy avenging the one me I went Matthew the same thing's going to happen again. You're going to run away. Yeah, it's yeah, going to yeah. look terrible. Yeah. I've gone from fights of the year. You the crowd. Yeah, yeah. it's gone from fights yeah. of the year to the worst fight of the year with you. No, mate. Yeah. Oh, you, you, can, you can live the rest of your life knowing that you've got the win over me. Yeah, well done. Yeah. Um, so we, we'll go on to that then. Our man from over the pond. Mr. Jeff Lacey. So how did that one come about then? It was... For the return. It's, it's mad, because... What it was, was it... Well, Facebook, social media. You know, it come from Facebook, it's, it's it? It's totally... This is what we're saying, you know. Mm. The pop... You know, you could... The, the amount of popularity I could have had back in the day, if My social God. media was around, you have to bear in mind, 
me and my uncle Frank, which my uncle Frank was the, the main person when it comes to selling tickets. Yeah, because Frank's still in, obviously still yeah, involved. Yeah, yeah, he's still involved with Mark Chamberlain and stuff. Yeah. But the amount of tickets we used to sell and the money we used mm. to have to take down at the Wayne without the day before, social media. Without no social media, yeah. phone and a text message. That yeah. was all we had. Right, so imagine if we had social media oh, you'd around. Be blowing up. Oh, it'd be absolutely mental. But Matt put it on Facebook that he had Jeff Lacey coming over. And obviously, I've commented on it because I was supposed to think, I was supposed to fight Jeff Lacey. Not supposed to fight him, that's a lie. When me and my Uncle Frank was out in Portugal with mm. Kelly or Frank, whatever you want to call Mr. Maloney or Mrs. Yep. Maloney, I'm not, listen, I got, again, got the utmost respect for yep. Kelly. And, um, we had to have a meeting with Frank Warren because he's got no, he had a place out there at the time, and he actually offered me a fight with Jeff Lacey, who I just watched. I don't know if it was somewhere in Wales because we went. He fought on the same show as Joe Calzaghe, mm. and he and we we accepted that fight he at Super Robin Middle. Reed, didn't he? Yeah, he did. He beat yeah. Robin Reed. Yeah, he, I think he Robin put Reed, Robin Reed down. Yeah, I think he hurt Robin Reed, but he? I don't think things was quite right for was Robin, Robin Reed. Robin Reed a bit older at the time. Yeah, but I think well, things yeah. was behind the scenes weren't quite right. Yeah, but, and, yeah. and going by my own. Experiences, I can get that. If did things he beat Roy Jones, Lacey? He fought Roy Jones. He fought Roy he? Jones, then Roy Jones beat him. Oh, did he? Yeah, yeah but he beat him a little yeah. bit late on. But yeah, so he put that up. So that was someone who I knew that I would have fought, could have fought years ago. Same as Calzaghe. I was actually down after Barney. There was talking me fighting Calzaghe. Oh. Calzaghe coming up like every. You know, when you put out these names, oh, even, well. even when I won the British title, I was supposed to fight, I can't remember who it was, Dean Powell. I was supposed to, I don't know if it was Obo when he pulled out, they offered me Danny Green. Do you remember Danny Green yeah, yeah. from Australia? I actually signed a contract to go over to Australia and fight Danny Green. Jesus. But anyway, this getting back to this one, I'm running away with it. Go on, you're right. Get, with Lacey, he put it up on Facebook that Lacey was coming over mm. and he was looking for someone to fight him. Well, obviously Matt knew me, because as I say, he was really good friends with Dean Francis. And I said, well, I'll fight him. Because I was still training. I just opened this gym with uh, Brian Davidson. Yeah. So I was training, I was still, you know, I was in tip top shape. Mm. So it, 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 anyway, got it done, trained for it, trained for it here, Scotland, Portsmouth, they went up there and we went to Bristol and I played with him. Mm. I absolutely played with him. And it's one of the performances of my career, that late on in my career, if that makes sense. Do you think he mm. underestimated you? Totally. Because I saw him in one of the interviews, he's like, I don't know who yeah. Tony Oakley yeah. is. And you, and, well, actually, there was the gloves are off that you did, and you were like, well, you do now, because I beat you in the yeah. first fight. And that was the case, yeah. it really was. And I think it totally reversed in mm. the rematch, because I, I did, I played with him. Like, when Robin Reed came out and said, look, he's got an injury, so it's going to have to go to the scorecards, score he said, but you've won every round. Mm. I'm scoring it, you've won every round easy. So that was a, a real good performance. I think Lacey was one of the performances of my, my career. Yeah. I think Spartacus was another one. I think Chris Davis was another one of my performances of my career. For entertainment, you can't beat the Kiarston one. Mm. Do you know what I mean? But then when Matt come about, like, yeah, so that, the that majority, put, yeah, well, pretty much all, the majority of fights were all entertaining. Time, yeah, do you know? And when when Matt rang me up about the rematch a couple of years later, well, in them two years, boxing, you know, I'd, I'd sold my half to Brian, who, who owns Warriors now. Yeah, you know, so I was no longer in the gym constantly. Yeah, I, I, I'd settled down with my missus. Yeah, she'd moved in. We'd had a baby. Two years older. Yeah, as well. the full time job because yeah. obviously I had earned. The type of money in my career where I ain't, can't do nothing. I'm not saying I might not have a decent pension to look forward to, mm. but I haven't earned the type of money that I can't do nothing. So Tom he, was sorry to butt in. Tom was saying actually when we was on the way down here, obviously not going too much into the financials, but he was like, how much money back in the day would a boxer have, have made? Would you have made enough money? back in the day to be comfortable now in later life. Because nowadays, you've got YouTubers that are making four million for yeah. a fight. If, if I'm honest, and I'm gonna hold yeah. my hands up to this, right, That a lot of that could have been my fault, because I did earn all right money. At all the right time. money. Because yeah. even I was saying about prize fight at 25 grand, 25 grand when you won, 25 grand is 25 grand, yeah. it's a lot of money, but 25 grand when you won yeah. the 25 grand was a lot. It was a large amount of dosh, I, I, wasn't it? I, I was young when I, I was young yeah. and a bit naive. I used to. I think I had six or seven holidays in one year. Did you? I've been on thirty-five like different like but, lads' holidays. But that's you, not including family holidays. But you enjoyed it. Mate. Yeah, that's what and, I'm and saying. You were, you were earning. Oh, it. I wouldn't change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't. You know, I wouldn't change. I had this discussion with the wife mm. a couple of days ago, and she was. She said, um, 
about if I had met her when I was younger. But I said to her, I said, but you know what, love? I said, I appreciate you now mm. because of what I experienced when I was younger. Yeah, and I realised how, yeah, how, yeah, how yeah. lucky I am to have her and the life that I've got now. Yeah. And, and I did earn really good money back mm. then, but I also had a hectic life. Yeah. Holidays here, you there and everywhere. Yeah. New cars. New every, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Constantly partying when I weren't training. Yeah, you know, yeah. if, if I had been different, would I have still been in love with boxing because I was just a fighter? I don't, you know, I wasn't a businessman, mm. you know, and, and I, I wasn't an athlete as such. Sometimes. So I don't know whether I would have been happy. Mm. Or would I continue? If I, if I, live, if this is a hundred percent, and I will say this because mm. Ronnie always says it, right? And I'm not one, as I say, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with everything I achieved. I'm happy with everything I accomplished. And, I, and, and I'm really happy with life, you know. Mm. But if I had been more dedicated and I'd been more like an athlete like I should have been mm. and lived the life, Yes, I do think I would have been in Vegas. Yes, I do. Because of the sparring I had and how much I'd held my own with all the sparrings yeah, I had. Definitely. The fights that I had had. And so what percentage do you I'll, think you were at then, time? Th realistically, I don't think... Fitness-wise, because I was, a, I was a remarkable trainer, I really mm. was. But I would say you only really see about 75-80% really? of, of what I could have been yeah. if I'd lived the life. But then, I don't, as I say, I don't know whether that made me unhappy... Mm. So therefore, I could have very well. Have, like, sometimes it gives quit. you. Do you sometimes it gives, what I'm saying? it gives you the edge. Like people talk about, like George Best. Would George Best have been George Best if he was two no. total and didn't yeah. have his down and time and didn't enjoy his life? Or did yeah. it just give him the edge? Or did he turn up to the games and be like, I don't give a fuck. I'm just going to go out there and express myself. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes that makes you who you are. Yeah. No, if you I, take it all out and filter it all out, we'd all be the fucking same, wouldn't we? Yeah. And 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 I and I believe that. I think maybe if that that. If I had done that and been like that, mm. I might have fell out of love with the fight inside yeah. of it because I, I used to love the training. So intense. Yeah, so I would love the fight. Time. Yeah. But I also love my downtime as well. Do you know yeah. what I mean? So, and it's, so then when he rung for the the rematch, well, in that that two years, as I said, I had a baby, settled mm. down with a wife, and this, that, and the other. Got myself another like a, a full time job. Yeah. I said to him, "When are you doing it?" He said, "In December." This was in the gym and all stuff like that. Matt said. Do you want to do it? And I oh, just straight away, I done what he done the first time. Mm. I thought, because I've beaten so easy. Yeah, it's a doddle. It's a doddle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I ain't got to do what I done last time. Whereas, yeah. well, I, I was up in Scotland sparring. And, I saw you. And I saw you for the first fight. I think I saw you down the Mount Batten for one of the boys' fights. It might yeah. have been Mikey McKinson yeah. or Floyd Moore was fighting down there. Yeah. And I saw you Floyd, down there. Floyd's was, done for you Portsmouth were boxing. Oh, Floyd's amazing. He, like, he, shout he, out Floyd Moore. Yeah. He, um, yeah, I've I like Floyd. Floyd's yeah, good as gold. Oh, yeah, he's brilliant. He he's a really that. good lad. But yeah. he's, he's a bit like yourself. He did. He had the boxing, and then he just disappeared. Yeah. And and you've done the same thing. Yeah. He's quite a quiet bloke, Floyd, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, then I, so then I had that the rematch with him, and I started boxing, and, and I thought I was I was actually pissed in the first round. If you watch on the thing, and then I got caught with the right hand at the end of the at the end of the first round, and no one really notices. I went and sat down, mm -hmm. and Johnny Eames was talking to me because even though. Johnny wasn't training me. He always said, you are not going in the ring without me being in your corner because that's how close we are. Yeah, so he's still yeah. come down and done my corner for me. Brilliant. And he's talking away to me and I can't hear a thing he's saying. Mm. And I thought, oh, I don't know. Do you know I just, my punch resistance obviously wasn't what it was. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And then I went out in the second round and I just went at him and well, the rest you is... You had a trade-off, didn't you? Yeah, I had a trade-off. Yeah. Went down, got up, legs were all like that. Got myself a bit all right, yeah. then went banging again and then, and then got stopped. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's but, um, yeah, I didn't think you looked 100% when you got up with, with your legs, with your legs yeah. and whatnot. But by but the end of the count, yeah. you was all right. I was all right. Because yeah. I was, I, please don't think for a second I'm saying I, I was yeah. mentally, yeah. I don't think I was on the ball. No. But physically, I was still as fit as a flea. I'm, I, I, yeah, you know, I was yeah. still as fit as a flea. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But I just think mentally, I just totally disregarded him. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And I just totally underestimated him. And then, and then yeah. he, this two-time world champion. Left Lacey. Well, he was Ring Magazine fighter of the year yeah, one year. So well, there's they, no they shame. They were calling him the yeah. bloody middleweight Mike Tyson, weren't yeah. they? So, so what about fight number three? Would you fight him for no, a third? You got one, you got one all now, haven't you? I, I would. You would? I would. But I'm not... Jeff. No, no, I would. <laughs> let me say it. I, I don't Jeff. think the wife would let me. Yeah. I would, 100%. If he splits up with a wife, Jeff, <laughs> it's on. Yeah. I don't, yeah, I don't think she would let me, but do you know what? I've, I've raised hundreds of thousands for charity yeah. with all different. I think you've seen me train them before, and I've done it for Oakley Waterman. Yeah, yeah. All, loads of different charities and that. So, on a whole, 
when you look at Tony Oakey's career, Amazing. from from a little kid, yeah, then to an adult, th- representing his country, mm. then going on as a pro, winning absolutely every single title available, areas, internationals, the British, the Commonwealth, prize fighters, yeah, yeah. the world. You know, one thing that could never ever get taken away from me, and I'm very very proud of it, and, and I will say that very very proud of it. I'm the first ever world champion to ever come out of Portsmouth and its area. My man. Do I do I want to be the only one? No, I don't. No, of course. But I will love the fact that I will always be known as the first. Yeah. But I do want there to be another one. And I think with the youngsters that was around me, like the Lucas Ballingals, yep. the McKinsons, yep, Mikey. you know, where and you got Chamberlain that's coming through yeah, and that as well. I think I sort of kick-started it. And a little bit before me, it was Paul Dye. He deserves a mention because he yeah. was about as a pro. Yeah, he does yeah. deserve a mention. Yeah. Paul had he was big a big nuts. Yeah, yeah, he did. He did. And he was, he was a little tough nut. Yeah. You know? So to then go on from him, to then do what we've done, and every, and now look what it's the ripple. Mm. is rippling. And now I'd like to think that Lucas and Michael could sort of do the same thing for the youngsters looking at them. Definitely. Do, do you know That's what I mean? What it's all about, and then Joel McIntyre as well. I forget Joel. Yeah, he went on Joel. and he won the English. Yeah, he's made you know, a comeback I was the one that actually got him turned over. Yeah, nice I've done that Joel. as a favour to Louis Bell. Yeah. A shout out to Louis. He sponsored yeah. me back in the early days. Yeah, I know Louis. Yeah. Summerstown. Boy, yeah, 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 yeah. So, you know what I mean? So, it, it's nice, you know, because there wasn't really... Pompey was never known as a hotbed. No, do you know what I mean? Not, not as I say, amateur, you had boxing, Tunga, right? as you say, the Bessie and this, yeah. uh, fro- uh, Frost, and yeah. that, you know, like the amateurs, we've always been a bit solid, but yeah. pros, we haven't. No. As we say, you, Dyer was sort of on his own, mm. do you know what I mean? And then, like, to go from me into now to what we've got now, it, it's fantastic, and I would love it to carry on. Yeah. Do you know what, what I mean? What about the training side of it, then, Tony? Is that something that you, a time, I suppose, is yes, it? it uh, yeah. Do you know one thing I'm not going to do, Chris yeah. Wright, is, 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 is and I'm sure Mikey Ballinger will understand when I say this, yeah. right? I don't want to sacrifice my time with my kids. Yeah, yeah. Training other people's kids. Yeah, I get that. Right? And Mikey is, and, and like I say, Mikey was a student of the game with me. He was always there on the runs with me, training yeah. camps and that. And now he's enjoying it. And, he, and they deserve it. As a family, they deserve it. Yeah, definitely. Right? And, lovely family. Yeah, and he yeah. they're living out their dreams with their dad and it's all it's all good and great. Yeah. Right? Go and ask them where where are they every evening after work or whatever like, in the gym. Yeah, yeah. I it's can't I, I've I've done that. Yeah. Well as I say when I went and trained Lee Park for a year, yeah. I was in the gym every night and I thought I've retired yeah. from boxing and I'm in the gym every night. When you're gonna be able to live and your I've life. got kids. Yeah. Do you know yeah, what I mean? I and yeah. and I don't want to sacrifice that. If one of my kids box, mm. you know, then obviously I, yeah, I won't want them to, mm. I don't. Well, I sort of do and I don't. I do for, as an amateur, but not a professional. I don't want them to go through what I went through. Broken yeah. hands, broken ribs, broken noses. Yeah. But as an amateur, I would because I know how much respect I've got for Jeff and how much respect I've got for my brother. And, and, yeah. and my, do, do you understand what I mean? Mm. But I think there's an element of as we get older to teach and educate people maybe the way that we got taught and educated when we were younger. Yeah, so it's yeah. In, in, yeah. in a certain way. Yeah. Even if even with that's knowledge, like you say, with the young with the fighters, um, like your Joel McIntyre's and your, yeah. your Gary Neal's coming up. Yeah, yeah. They look at you. I enjoyed they, they, when they, I tr- they look up to you. Yeah, yeah. They look up when to I you trained, look for advice. Yeah, when I trained I Gary Neal, I loved it. I yeah, loved it. Yeah. I think it we trained up right up to his first little title win. Yeah. You know, I did. I did love it. I got a lot of time for little Gary in that. Yeah. But I still did take out a lot of my time. And when you've got other, you've got your children at home. Yeah. They've got to come first. You've got to earn your money. You That's why I'm saying, that. like, the, the Ballingals must be loving it at the moment because they're, they're, they're experienced all as a family and they're in the gym yeah. as a family. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. Which I suppose if if uh, Tony Boy, my little son Tony, yep. if he fights or whether Franklin, you know, yep. Franklin don't stop yeah, hitting yeah. me, hitting the bag. I showed you a video earlier. Yeah, he three looks, years he looks old. Talented. Watch out, three year olds. He's got the engine on him. Yeah. He's got the Oki engine yeah. on him. Do you know what I mean? And, and my boy Tony Boy, he, he's a brilliant little footballer and he, yeah. he shapes that lovely little Southpaw boxing. But again, I haven't showed these, these boys none of this. Yeah. If it comes later on, then I've got a course. I'll be there in their corner, I'll do everything for them. Do you know what I mean? But they're doing it all on their own. And, and I just want to focus my time now on the missus, 
the kids yeah, good, and the family. Good as I say, I do do my bit for charities, loads, as, as yeah. you know. Yeah. I, I have, I, you know, I've raised truckloads, you know, and so I'll always will do my bit for charity yeah. if I can, because I'm, I'm privileged and, and I'm glad that I'm in a sort of position where I'd be asked to do that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You've, you've, you've earned that. Yeah. <laughs> you've earned that all. But, but on the whole, the most yeah. important thing now for me is to just get on with life yeah. and look to the next chapter of my life, which is obviously towards retirement, dad, granddad yeah. sort of time. You're not that old yet, Michelle, yeah? No, I'm 46, but I feel wow. 56. On that note, Tom, thank you very much, mate. No, Cheers thanks for having me. I've got a little something for you, mate. There's a tradition with this from Thomas and myself. Now, I don't know if you drink any more, but if you do, <sighs> mate, that's from us and that's from us as well. Oh, thank you very All much, right. lads. Cheers, champ. Lovely. Well done, Thank mate. You. Cheers. 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 Cheers.